So very conveniently, I will now go on to my talk. Um, all right. So we're going to talk now about another uh, list that we celebrate. So we celebrate our innovators under 35, but we also celebrate every year our 10 breakthrough technologies. So this is when we talk about the technologies. We don't talk about the people. The innovators is very much about the people in the community. Um, this list is very much about the actual technologies. So every spring uh, since 2001, MIT Technology Review has published published a list of the 10 technologies that we believe are the big breakthroughs that are going to make uh, the changes. These are innovations that are a clear advance in their field. And the list will help our readers understand which technologies are likely to have the biggest impact on businesses and society. To create it, we solicit guidance uh, from experts all around the world, from companies, universities, investment firms, and top research labs. So a reasonable question would be, how have we fared so far since 2001? Did we get our predictions right? And over the years, we've gotten many right, but we've also um, hit, you know, we're not perfect. We've also completely, you know, missed the mark. And um, we've been wrong. Um, or at least too early. So in 2001, we wrote about Stephen Quake's work in microfluidics, and uh, driven by the technologies used in gene sequencing machines and diagnostic devices, this market is now expected to reach 4 billion by 2020, according to Lux Research. So this is an example of where we got it right. Another one where we did get it right was in 2009, where we found a smart personal assistant inside SRI, the Silicon Valley research giant, which astonished us all by its naturalness. And that became Siri when Steve Jobs purchased it for Apple's iPhone. And today, smart assistants are ubiquitous in our devices, and we have made the leap into the home with products like Amazon Echo and Google Home, etc. So here's something we got completely wrong. Um, social TV was a 2010 breakthrough technology, and we thought that social media and broadcast would somehow merge. Um, but they remain obstinately separate streams that people can experience simultaneously tweeting their impressions of the presidential debates as they watch them on TV. So let's take a little look at this year's list. So this video is from Desktop Metal, a metal 3D printing company in Massachusetts that is at the cutting edge of making 3D printing quick and affordable for the masses. And this particular printer is the Desktop Metal Production System and can print a hundred times faster than any other metal printers. At $120,000 for the entry level printer, these 3D metal printers are not currently affordable for ev at a price point where they'll be in everyone's homes yet. But at this price point, uh, small businesses and universities can afford them, and this will make proto product prototyping even quicker and possible for future generations. So this could really transform manufacturing. And GE has long been a proponent of using 3D printing in its aviation products um, and has a test version of its new metal printer that is fast enough to make large parts. And the company plans to start selling this year. So some of our um, the key players here are uh, Mark Forged, uh, Desktop Metal, and uh, GE. Our next breakthrough is uh, in a breakthrough that redefines how life can be created. Embryologists are working with the University of Cambridge in the UK and have re grown realistic looking mouse embryos using only stem cells, no egg, no sperm. And these are just cells plucked from another embryo. And researchers have watched fascinated as they've started communicating and lining up and basically self-organizing so perfectly into the distinctive shape of a mouse embryo. So these synthetic embryos 
probably couldn't have grown into mice. But nonetheless, they really are a hint of what's to come and that we could soon have mammals born without an egg at all. And this matters because artificial embryos will make it easier to study the mysterious beginnings of a human life. Um, but this, of course, poses an enormous amount of ethical questions, such as what if they turn out to be indistinguishable from real embryos, and how long before they start feeling pain? So, you know, we have a lot of ethical questions that we need to address before we can race ahead with the creation of human embryos. Our key players here are the University of Cambridge, Rockefeller University, and the University of Michigan, and the availability is now. Our next breakthrough is Sensing City. Um, Alphabet Sidewalk Labs plans to create a high-tech district to rethink how we build and run cities. So a Toronto neighborhood aims to be the first place to successfully integrate cutting-edge urban design with state-of-the-art technology. So. Numerous smart city schemes have failed, and this new project in Toronto is called Keyside. Alphabet Sidewalk Labs, based in New York City, is collaborating with the Canadian government on high-tech projects slated for Toronto's industrial waterfront. One of the project's goals is to base decisions about design, policy, and technology on information from an extensive network of sensors that gather data on everything from air quality to noise levels to people's activities. So the plan calls for all vehicles to be autonomous and shares. Um, robots will roam underground doing menial chores like delivering the mail. And Sidewalk Labs says that it will open access to the software and systems it is creating so that other companies can build services on top of them, much as people will build apps for mobile phones. So other North American companies are clamoring to be on this li list. San Francisco, Denver, Boston, and LA have all asked for introductions. So Sidewalk Labs, these are our key players right now. And uh, construction could begin in 2019. Our breakthrough technology number four, AI for everybody. Machine, making machine learning tools available through cloud services could spread artificial intelligence far and wide. So up until now, AI has really been the plaything of very big tech companies very big tech companies like Baidu and Amazon, as well as some more established startups. But for many other companies, AI systems are too expensive and too difficult to implement. So what's the solution? It's machine learning tools based in the cloud are bringing AI to a far broader audience. So far, Amazon dominates cloud AI with its AWS subsidiary. Google is challenging that with TensorFlow, an open source AI library that can be used to build other machine learning software. Recently, Google announced Cloud AutoML, a suite of pre-trained systems that could make AI simpler to use. But there are more, and it's unclear which of these companies will probably be the leader in the future, but it really is going to be a huge win um, for a huge business uh, for uh, some of the bigger companies. So most companies, though, still don't have enough people who know how to use AI. Um, so Amazon and Google are also setting up consultancy services. And once the cloud puts the technology within reach of almost everyone, this real AI revolution can probably begin. So these are our key players that need no introduction. So breakthrough number five is uh, Dueling, dual, dueling neural networks. Um, two AI systems can spar with each other to create ultra-realistic original images or sounds, something machines have never been able to do before. 
For the last decade, we've featured advances in artificial intelligence in each year's 10 breakthrough technology. Last year, we talked about self-driving trucks and reinforcement learning. And this year, we are surfacing dueling neural networks, otherwise known as Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN. So a GAN is uh, two AI systems that are pitted against one another, um, with the first AI system trying to create something brand new, and the second AI system is trying to determine if it's a fake or not. Um, researchers at NVIDIA trained a GAN to generate pictures of imaginary celebrities by studying real ones. And not all the fake stars it produced were perfect, but some were you know, impressively realistic. So this gives machines something akin to a sense of imagination, which may help them become less reliant on humans. And in a world where information on the internet is unreliable and we are concerned with the effects of fake news, there is this question of, of um, will these advances in artificial intelligence actually become a tool for people to spread false information? So that is the ethical dilemma and the question. These are our players, D NVIDIA, DeepMind, and Google. Excuse me. So, like the Babelfish from the cult sci-fi classic, I don't know if you've read it, I certainly did, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where it sits inside your ear and instantly translates languages. New technologies developed by Google and Baidu promises a world where technology can break down language barriers. So near real-time translation now works for a large number of languages and is easy to use. So one person wears the earbuds. while the other holds a phone. And the earbud wearer speaks in his or her language. English is the default, and the app translates the talking and plays it aloud on the phone. And the person holding the phone responds, and this response is then translated and played through the earbuds. So in an increasing global world where language is still a barrier to communication, this is a, we, th we thought that this was worth highlighting our key players in this, and its availability is now. This is a video of the pilot power plant just outside of Houston, which will more efficiently and cleanly capture and reuse the carbon released by burning natural gas. So the world is probably stuck with natural gas for the, for the foreseeable future as electricity. And cheap and readily available, it now accounts for 30% of US electricity and 22% of world electricity. And although it's cleaner than coal, it is still a massive source of carbon emissions. The company Net Power believes it can generate power at least as cheaply as standard natural gas plants and capture essentially all of the carbon dioxide. So if so, it would mean that the world has a way to produce carbon-free energy from a fossil fuel at a reasonable cost. And such natural gas plants could be cranked up and down on demand and avoid the high capital costs of nuclear power and also sidestepping that unsteady supply that renewables generally provide. So net power's technology won't solve all of the problems with natural gas, particularly on the extraction side, but as long as we're using natural gas, we might as well use it as cleanly as possible. And I think of all of the clean energy technologies in development, net powers is the one that is furthest along um, to promise more than just a marginal advance in cutting carbon emissions. Our key players and our availability three to five years. Perfect online privacy is our eighth breakthrough, a tool developed for blockchains makes it possible to carry out a digital transaction without revealing any more information than absolutely necessary. 
true internet privacy can finally now become possible thanks to a new tool and le let you provide uh, the information that you're over 18 without sharing your date of birth or allow you to be able to say that you have enough money in your bank account without letting them know what you're revealing your balance. So this really limits the risk of a privacy threat or identity theft. Um, the tool is an emerging cryptographic protocol called a zero knowledge proof. And though researchers have worked on it for decades, interest has exploded in the past year, thanks in part to the growing obsession with cryptocurrencies, um, most of which aren't private. So for all their promise though, these methods are computation heavy and slow and s require a so-called trusted setup, creating a cryptographic key um, that could compromise the whole system if it fell into the wrong hands. But researchers are looking at alternatives that deploy zero knowledge proofs more efficiently and don't require such a key. These are our players. Genetic fortune telling, our ninth breakthrough. Large genetic studies are allowing scientists to predict common diseases and human traits. Scientists can now use your genome to predict your chances of getting heart disease or breast cancer and even your IQ. So this photo is from the UK Biobank, showing the half a million frozen DNA samples donated by British volunteers as part of the UK Biobank's effort. And there's a robot is on the yellow rails searching amongst the samples. DNA predictions could be the next great public health advance, but they could also increase the risk of uh, genetic discrimination. Some of our key players, 23andMe, Myriad, The Broad, and our availability is now. So our final breakthrough, number 10, is a materials quantum leap. Researchers recently used a quantum computer to model a simple molecule, and that is just the start. The breakthrough IBM has simulated the electronic structure of a small molecule using a seven qubit quantum computer. The prospect of powerful new quantum computers comes with a puzzle. They'll be capable of feats of computation completely inconceivable with today's machines. But we haven't yet figured out how and what we might do with those powers. So one likely and enticing possibility is precisely designing molecules. Chemists are already dreaming of new proteins for far more effective drugs, novel electrolytes for better batteries, and compounds that could turn sunlight into a liquid fuel much more efficient for solar cells. So in this image, the chips inside at the bottom of this computer from IBM are cooled down to 15 millikelvin. That is below absolute zero. So this matters because understanding mono molecules in exact detail will allow chemists to design more effective drugs and better materials for generating and distributing energy. Our key players. So really, why does any of this matter? Um, technology can do great things for humankind, and it can help cure disease, conserve resources for our future generations. Um, but as a society, we do need to learn how to talk about these technologies and how we use them rather than allowing them to use us. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you'd like more information about Technology Review, please visit technologyreview.com. Thank you.